The Falkland Islands are home to a staggeringly varied breadth of wildlife. From those who venture on land, such as the sea lions and the penguins, to those who reside permanently in the water, such as whales and dolphins. But for the greatest variety, you need to direct your gaze to the sky, as the bird life in the islands attracts tourists from all around the world. Seeing the bird life, whether you want to capture it on camera or simply admire it in person, can be a bit of a challenge, especially here. From the turbulent weather to ensuring that you don't disturb these species in their natural environment, being at one with nature can often be quite difficult. So how do you get close to the wildlife without disturbing it and without being blown away by the wind? One man has dedicated a part of his working career to try and provide the answer to just that question. I met up with Tormod Amundsen, an architect and the founder of the company Biotope, and a self-described nature enthusiast, photographer and conservationist. After attending architecture school in central Norway, he moved to the most northern part of the country, in the Arctic Circle, to set up his business. Despite being told he probably wouldn't succeed, Tormod saw an opportunity to bring a new lease of life into the town of Vardo by merging his love for nature and his work. The idea was that if we could somehow introduce tourism to that place, because that wasn't the, wasn't the thing in, in Vardo. Uh, we moved there in 2009 and it was a town that was ranked as the worst place in Norway to move to business-wise. Um, the reason is fishing industry was going down. They hadn't really looked into other potentials and we saw the potential to develop tourism and ecotourism specifically centered around wildlife, bird life, that incredibly rich nature they have there. And we thought, okay, we're going to be a part of establishing the whole scene in that destination, putting it on the map. Biotope's work has been hugely successful in Norway and over the last few years, have expanded their reach to seven other countries, including the UK, China and Iceland. But would their approach to creating a seamless merging of nature and tourism work here? Yeah, I feel, I feel fairly certain that you, that could make a very positive contribution to the Falklands. I mean, obviously the attraction, the attraction you already have, the wildlife is amazing, the scenery is spectacular and it's it's friendly people everywhere, so you have the attraction. It's just about, for me, the architecture is about facilitating for the attraction. It's not necessarily for the architecture to be the attraction. It's almost like we're thinking of, it's, it's what you experience from the architecture that is the most important thing. But, but that also means that you need to think very carefully as an architect where you position things, uh, where, like how do you handle wind, that's, that's a key thing because you can handle wind very badly with architecture or you can handle it very well. So, for example, like this, like the lighthouse, it isn't a good wind shelter standing on the outside of it because it's just round so the wind just moves very easily around it. So if you look at our, our architecture, it's, it's all about having sheltered spaces on several sides of a building. So you, whichever wind direction you will have, you will always find this sheltered space but it, and at the same time have a nice view. And so it's thinking about the sceneries, thinking about wind direction and then making it not necessarily camouflage it in the landscape, but make, design a building so it makes sense in the landscape. So when you, when you see it, you're thinking, well, yeah, I understand, that makes sense. That's what, kind of what we're trying to achieve. And having flown from 70 degrees north to 51 degrees south, what was the highlight of Tormod's trip? Oh, well, I, I tell you what, it's been a dream of mine since I was a little kid. I mean, I've been raised on BBC nature movies all the time. David Attenborough is my big hero. And I've been, I've been wanting to go to the Falkland Islands for a very, very long time. I kind of had two, uh, several key dreams, but one of them is to go to Falkland Islands, the other is to see Snow Leopard, but I wanted to do it through work, through to what I did as an architect and as a keen nature enthusiast. And I've done both this year, so I've both been seeing Snow Leopard and I, now I'm here in Falcons. And it's amazing. What you have here is uh, been absolutely mind-blowing, actually. It's hard to point out one highlight, but just, I think, 
proximity to wildlife, that's a key thing. Proximity to wildlife, just getting that incredibly close, just sitting and having an, having an albatross just a meter away from you, and just hearing the whoosh from an albatross just flying over your head, that's been incredible, yeah.